Yeah. We have a few people at home. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're here again for another graduation, this time with class 12. Uh, congratulations for your journey. Yeah, so today um, we're going to present the, the final project. Um, so we have Zaki that will talk a little bit about the the mentor, the team, what we did for them uh, in order to set this uh, project and to follow up the project with them. And then we're going to have the students' presentations. And in the end, we'll have uh, time for some questions and answers. Uh, if you're online, you can just write in the chat and we'll make sure that you have your, your question answered. Um, yeah, and then we'll have a little ceremony. Um, yeah, welcome again and thank you for for coming. Um, so yeah, I'm also just going to say a few words before we start. Like Daniel said, it's a big day. We always very excited. Um, and uh, I'm going to say a little bit more about the team, the young and talented team uh, in the end of the, the graduate. It's, uh, it's a big class graduating. You there are 11 graduates today. Uh, and you have all been part of class 12 the whole way through. So, so that's a, actually a very yeah, special thing. Uh, send an app about uh, for children. I will not say more. We'll talk a lot about that. And for all of you listening, please ask questions, but save it for the Q&A. So like if you think things while the students are presenting, there is uh, lots of time to ask questions and that, that would be great to have. And of course, uh, it's very important also that now there's also these uh, web developers looking for jobs and internships. So if you hear of anything, maybe today or later on, tell them or let them know if you have some good recommendations for, for the job search. And uh, yeah, settle in and get ready for the presentations. Yeah. Um. Yeah, with, with the final project, our, our goal is to, to make it as real as possible. So we tried to make a collaboration. This time, uh, it was an idea from a mentor to build a, a game for, for kids. Um, but the challenge that we proposed to the students is to solve a problem and collaborate in a big team. Um, yeah, we actually did half remote, half presential. Um, in, so every every second Sunday we we met here at the at the office, and every second Sunday we were uh, remotely. So that was a, a an experience that covered both uh, both settings. Uh, this time we have all the students uh, graduating. I don't think we ever did this. So congratulations for the team effort. You you made it all together. Yeah, and then we had uh, uh, early um, warm-up tasks that some of you that had the homework uh, up, up today uh, were challenged with. Um, yeah, and then I'm going to invite Zaki to talk a little bit about our mentor uh, team. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, I wanted to talk a little bit about that kind of journey it is to build a software product. Um, it's kind of the, the sort of journey where you, you don't entirely know the destination, but you kind of like have an idea about the course. You don't know exactly what it's going to look like. You don't know exactly what the project is going to work like up front. That's something that you're going to uh, discover as, as, as you go more or less. Of course, you always try to plan as much uh, at, at, ahead as you can, but it, it's, it's just not realistic to know exactly where, we, where we're going to end up. Um, and that's, of course, causing a lot of uncertainty. And that's also, um, it's, it's, it's something that's very like inherent to the process of learning as well. Um, so I think the project here, that, that's, that's really the place where the students get the chance to, to distill all of the knowledge that they learn through, uh, through the course. Very often they come to the final project and have a feeling that they feel quite confident that now they're pretty good at React. Or they're pretty good at HTML, CSS, and so on and so on. But in reality, when they come to the project, they realize it's something completely different. 
because now you have to do it together with other people. You need to make it so it actually works together with other technologies. You need to make everything link up together. And I think that's like the that, that's like the, the really hard part, but that's also the part where you learn a lot. Apparently, um, it's not supposed to press space here. No, it's oh, the, the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Have anyone seen this curve before? Yes. 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 That's good. That's the uh, that's the Dunning Kruger effect. Um, and uh, the curve is you can see we have like competence on one axis, we have knowledge on the other axis, right? So in the beginning, when you're learning something new, um, you you think you know it. You think you can go out and you can do it. I I I, I can do this. Lots of confidence, right? Um, in reality, you only have a little bit of knowledge about the topic, but, but you think it's enough. Then you start doing it, and then you realize you need a lot more knowledge. And then you go down in this, what's called the valley of despair. Mm -hmm. And that's where you can really get lost. And uh, that's kind of my point about what the role as, as mentors on this project is. Um, so we want to make sure that the students don't get stuck in the void. We don't want them to... You, be like spending all their time down in the valley of despair. We want to push just enough that they can like feel there's some momentum. Of course, we cannot turn the students into like seasoned developers in the course of a few weeks, but but we can try our best. Um, and uh, one of the tools that we have is not necessary to break down walls in such a literal sense, but we can kind of break down some like walls in terms of learning. So we can help the students find out what is it that's stopping them from moving on. And we can help them break down problems as well. Um, and uh, then we provide them with a frame where we basically just ask them to fill in the blanks. So uh, whenever we're doing these projects, we don't ask the students to start entirely from scratch and build everything because we just wouldn't get far enough, and it actually wouldn't look like that in a, in a real company. In a real company, you don't start from scratch. You go out and you stand on the top of, on the shoulder of, of giants. You, you build on top of something other people have built for you. Um, so what we do is we're maintaining this project, a boilerplate project. It's a repository on GitHub where we have a bunch of different technologies prepared for the students. That's going to help, and we have some tests in there that will help let them know if they're breaking something big and bad. We have some uh, tools that makes it more visual and apparent what's going on. And we have uh, lots of different things to put together. We actually have it. So the, this project here, we have a server set up. We have a client set up. And there's just like a tiny little thing that you can put through this. But it has nothing to do with the actual project they're building. It's just so they're up and running from from day one. And we try to maintain this project and we try to teach them this project. So actually, most of the time, the curriculum of the final project is learn how to use this project. And a little tip for the new students, if you're feeling like a little bit adventurous, you're more than welcome to go and star this repo and maybe clone it on your computer and see if you can get it to run. If you can't, don't worry. You're not at the final project stage yet. <laughs> but. Uh, you can try if you want. It's it's definitely not going to 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 hurt anyone. So uh, yeah. So 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 the main point is what we're trying to do as mentors. We're trying to remove all of those those blocks that are stopping students from moving ahead. And uh, and we mostly do that by helping them like plan the project, break it down, and we provide some tools to to help help with that. Hello, hi everyone. I am uh, Ofran. I am uh, from Tunisia. I have uh, uh, been living in Denmark uh, for uh, three years and a half now. Um, before coming to Denmark, I uh, studied IT and uh, multimedia. So uh, I will present for you how uh, we uh, creating our uh, the wireframe for uh, our project. Uh, um, I got the chance to start on the early design stage uh, about a week before uh, start uh, before the project start. So I start so uh, so I start uh, this, <laughs> developing the wireframes uh, 
the wireframe concept by creating uh, black and white uh, sketches. Uh, afterwards, afterward, I I start to adding more details and uh, colors, uh, and uh, I uh, also create the logo. Uh, the the first attempt turned to uh, turned out too colorful, so. Uh, that because it's my first time designing something for uh, kids. So I tried to simplify more the colors and uh, I also changed uh, the logo and uh, add, uh, and uh, choose some better colors, uh, better uh, fonts. Um, now, here, uh, now the design, uh, the design concept uh, was uh, more or less clear for me, so I tried to change uh, the colors, uh, and finally I uh, I choose to work with uh, uh, orange color for uh, Etsy now, uh, and uh, this is the fun the final result for our uh, wireframes in a small video where I created it all frames. After creating um, the wireframes, we uh, start coding, where uh, each one of us uh, had some tasks uh, on in, in both uh, uh, front end and uh, back end. Uh, in my case, I like to work more on uh, front end because I like to see my uh, my work. Uh, for example, here I uh, I created the QR code. Uh, QR code uh, part uh, in in uh, React component uh, using uh, npm uh, npm uh, package. Uh, after that, we implemented it in the page uh, share share game page, so the game host can uh, share the, the the QR to the players. Mm. Uh, in in this project, I I learned how we how how it is to work with a big team and uh, of course we, we we learn a lot of new uh, technologies like uh, like a storybook for front end and uh, knex swagger for uh, for back end and the figma for that uh, creating the, the wireframes yeah that's it i will say thank you thank you so much for uh, Happy your future for this uh, opportunity and uh, yeah thank you so much <laughs> okay we have a crew now presenting her topic yeah hello i am banger i am from turkey and i've been living in copenhagen for last two years i have background in political sciences and my master thesis at albert university explore the blockchain and art. Before coming to hack your future, as you can see from the GIFs I used, my dream was to become a developer. Thanks to hack your future and community and all the mentors, I am one step closer to my goals. Tonight, I will provide you an overview of our project's architecture. And as we go along tonight, my colleagues will jump into the details about the technologies I'm mentioning here. 
As you can see in this schema, our project has pretty standard microservices architecture, where front end, the user interface, is connected to back end, where data is handled through a set of API endpoints. This architecture is pretty adaptable because right now we use React to build our front end, but let's say in future we decide to use React Native or expand to other platforms, we could easily do that. And it will still work fine. Now I will walk you through the architecture starting from the database. As you can see, uh, we use MySQL database, which communicates to the node servers through Next library. Next is pretty useful library, which lets us build queries for databases and queries built with <coughs> Next can be used with different databases other than MySQL. Let's say we want to use, use Postgres database, we could easily do it and it will still work fine. Our server that run, runs on Node.js consists set of API points, which is the connection between front-end and back-end. We use Swagger here to document and test this endpoint. Swagger allowed us to document our project and API, MP, a, API endpoints quite fast and precisely. As I mentioned er, earlier, we have built our front-end using React. We implemented a story clear, which I really like using because it allows us to build and visualize the usable components very conveniently. And finally, a whole project is bundled and compiled using a webpack. Before uh, passing it to my colleagues who are going to talk about front-end in detail, I'd like to mention a few things I've learned while doing this project. Except the technologies I've just mentioned, such as Swagger, Next, and Storybook, I've learned to appreciate Git more, and finally using it makes more sense. During the project, I became better at communicating technical issues and learned to collaborate effectively. Finally, last but not the least, I became better at fixing bugs and I'm not scared of the errors anymore. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Masime, I'm Iranian, and I'm living in Copenhagen for four years. I have a master in, in political science and I've been working in the humanitarian field for more than 11 years. Last summer, I was thinking and looking for a new challenge in my life. So I started programming at Hack Your Future. 10 months later, here I am. I've got an internship at AI Control. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. My name is Swati. I'm from India. I moved to Denmark two years back. Previously, I worked as a software tester. When I was working as a software tester, I was constantly interacting with a lot of web developers around me. So my curiosity and interest to become a web developer started from that point of time. Yeah. Today, on behalf of our team, Suati and I are going to talk about which library and tools we have used in front end of this project. First, we will talk about React a JS library to write user interfaces. The main idea behind the React is component. So we split our uh, UI into um, independent pieces that are declarative and stateful. Every component knows and specifies what it wants to render and react by using platform APIs. Take care of that to update what it shows on the screen and uh, what it shows on the screen and response <laughs> to do that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so I will talk about more detail of utilizing React in this project. In Treasure Hunt project, we also have tested and documented, shared our knowledge by using a storybook and its uh, plugins. Uh, it has also enabled us to showcase our work in an isolated environment without being worried about not finished um, APIs or depending on database. As a final point, our team used a convenient storybook add-on called Knob. It helped us to work and play around in the uh, UI without making changes in the code itself. So I will show you how a storybook and plugins help us 
to have an organized and efficient work in this project. Thank you, Masume, for a nice introduction about Storybook and React. Yeah, so I will try to explain the same a bit more practically. On the left side, you can see the list of all the components that we have in our project. So we have around 24 components that we use for the app. On the right side, you can see the start page of our game. So from a React perspective, when you see the start page, immediately you start splitting it into components. So let's just try to split it into components. So I can have the button as one component. I can have the heading and the logo as one component. I can have the individual pieces of code that make the specific functionality work. So for better understanding, let's just take the button component and I'll try to uh, uh, drive you through that. Okay. So you can see on the left side, that is the code for the button component that we wrote in React. On the right side is the code for the button component to get displayed on the storybook. Yeah, so finally, this is how the button component looks. So now we have the button component that we can use throughout the project. So, so that is the power of React, I feel, because we, we just write component once. So we just code once, and we just use it throughout the project multiple times. So we just avoid the rework. And with the storybook, there is a very cool add-on called uh, knobs with which we can interact with the UI that we designed. I can show you that in a GIF in the next slide. You can see here, suppose if I, if I want to use this button for a join game feature, I can just try to input join game here and try how it looks. If I want to use the button for a start game, I can just try to input that here and then try to look how it looks. So this is like, this is like super powerful because we don't have the entire project ready, but still we can see something in the UI. So that's kind of very good for us to know how things are going. So now over to Masumi. Okay. If I want to say in the, something about what I learned about this project, it would be, of course, teamwork and having a big picture of the whole project. It's a structure, it's logic at the very first beginning and then being flexible for any changes during the voyage. And among the many, I would remember two things as the most fun part of this project. Short distance between learning something and using it at a project. And of course, having a job with a good amount of other money brush. So now I would like to share with you all uh, some things that I learned from this project. So I, I learned to write isolated components with React and Storybook. And I also learned to use knobs in Storybook. And I also, I also became very mature and very confident to use Git around to, to play with Git. And I also learned to think about the project as a whole, starting from front end to the databases to the back end and the connections between them. And, and I also became very confident and strong to handle whatever errors that I get in the project. <laughs> I think that's very important. And now let's go to the fun part. I think most of the developers here would, would agree to what I'm going to show now. So this is the first one. I cannot, you know, whenever I look back at my code, which I wrote before a month or two months before, I just feel like, oh, what did I do writing it like this? I should have abstracted it into a function or maybe I should have used a map for a for loop, or maybe I should have used reduce here. So I have those kind of thoughts when I look back at my code, which is really funny. And I would like to know who all are with me on the next image that I show you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I just have some small feature that I implement in my code. And obviously I get some errors, that's very natural. And I try to fix those errors. I sit with the errors in the morning and when I see the clock, it's already late in the evening or maybe the next day. So this this happens all the time with me. And also this one, <laughs> sometimes, you know, uh, uh, I'm very confident on what I'm doing and I'll be like expecting the result to show up on the screen and it will not. I don't know why. And sometimes I'm like very doubtful if I did the right thing and I will be waiting for the errors on the screen and it will work. <laughs> and I was really super happy to find this on the internet because then it's sure that a lot of people are facing it, right? <laughs> and last, I would like to thank everybody for listening. I would like to thank the entire Hack Your Future uh, for having me here. 
the Zendesk, the Elasticsearch people, all the staff for sharing their knowledge with us, which we would carry for our entire life. Especially, I would like to thank uh, Alicia. <laughs> Sorry, <for that. laughs> Sorry, Amar. Especially, I would like to thank Alicia and Orhan for spending a lot of time with me at the critical times when they need, when when I wanted them. Uh, Arhan and Alicia, they are true inspiration for me. I hope Arhan is here today. Yes. I, hope, <laughs> I hope someday I can become like them. And last but not the least, I would like to thank my husband for supporting me throughout this entire Hack Your Future journey. Thank you. I would like to thank the Hack Your Future community for supporting all of us, especially Mari, who's always there for us. And finally, I'm looking forward to contributing to this community from now on. Thank you. Hello, people. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Amr Dahabi. I am from Syria. I came to Denmark uh, five years ago. Uh, I just finished uh, learning the uh, full stack with development and I enjoy learning all those new things and after this course I'm enjoying to learn IT things. Today me and Matas we're gonna talk short and precise about the backend we have did on behalf of our team. Yes thank you Amir and um, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, I am Mektas Abkam. I'm from Ethiopia and I did my bachelor's in IT and I'm currently working as a junior front-end web developer intern at Octo, and um, I enjoy watching old movies, spending some time with family and friends. Um, so today, as Amir said, we're going to talk about the backend. Uh, so we've learned a lot of things from this project, not, th not just this project, but this whole process as a whole. And um, I speak for both of us, right? When I say it's not just web yes. development we learn, but we've also learned how to work in teams, how to collaborate with our friends, and we have now become problem solvers. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. So specifically in the back end, um, before we started this whole process, we were not really sure how the back end worked and how it really operated in real life. But now we're able to tell that it is the code running at the back of the server and it it listens to client requests and it contains all the logics to send the appropriate data back to the client and that it contains the server, the app, and the database. So basically, a client makes requests uh, which is served by the endpoints and then which are routed by the API's route. We've also came across platforms like Node.js, and we've also made use of the uh, routing methods the Express Routing um, provides, like the post, the get, and the delete. Now, these are just some examples we used in the project. Uh, we've also learned how to create APIs, which are created in the backend, which are the collection of endpoints. And we've also learned how uh, to make a database calls using connects. Now we implemented this in the controller functions, which are linked to routers, and then which are exported to the API router, which is a common file for the routers, and then it's given an API. Now all of this we have implemented in the project, uh, and Amir will be glad to show you how we yep. implemented it. Yes, so how did we do this, or how did we implement this? Actually, we have used controller functions that are responsible about, uh, for called uh, DB calls. We have used routers, and we test our endpoints using Swagger. We chose two examples to talk about in this packet. One of them, it was this uh, controller function to the right, uh, where we got tasked to get uh, next question. So here we um, uh, made this file controller function, it joined three tables, question and actual answer and the answer choices. And we have put some conditions, just if the answer is correct or not. And we'll just uh, show uh, for the client the next question if it's answer correct. And to the left side, as you can see, you can see the router. And here we used router.get because we only needed to show data, not add or delete or modify or update. So we use this, uh, when the client asks for this uh, bucket, it will just take the next question 
controller and uh, we'll take this request and we'll send the, the result as JSON for the client. And in the next example here, um, we have another backend which is responsive about adding some data to our DB. And uh, this function to create a reducer rules and it's made by our classmate Swati. And she, um, yeah, she just uh, did it like uh, an object instead of uh, parent. And in the other side here, you can see the router. because we need to add some data, not only show or update or yeah. And uh, as before, when the client uh, asks for this um, function, it will uh, check the create user and then it will just send the result in the JSON. Yes. And uh, finally, we just uh, linked all the controller functions to routers and we put them all together in one API router, which is uh, include all the APIs uh, routers we need in our project. Mm -hmm. And now the fun part, if you start with it. <laughs> yes, I mean, um, I mean, the whole process for me has been fun. Like every Sundays we had, um, every years we fixed every fun conversation, it is all being, uh, it is all been fun for me. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and to see this uh, whole project coming alive, that was also really fun, that's the yes. best part. Yes, for, you. for me, when, when I got, as Swati mentioned, <laughs> small mistakes, yeah, it got six hours, yeah. and then just to find out, and after that, oh my God, I used <laughs> curly parentheses instead of normal. So sometimes it's fun. Okay. And um, finally. Yes, finally, we want to thank everybody in the Hack Your Future community, our friends, the mentors, and people in the management. Um, I mean, we know you guys work so hard to make this happen for us. So thank you for all the effort and for being patient with us. Uh, thank you. The study groups also, and just everybody, the alumni, every every person who ever helped us when we posted uh, uh, questions. Yes. Thank you all. Yeah. Uh, me and Hedge have decided to don't mention names because really we need to thank every single yeah. member in this um, amazing community, yeah. Hack Your Future, starting from our classmates up to mentors, alumni, everybody, management, everyone here. Thank you for giving us this opportunity and thanks for joining us today. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Luciana Caruso. I am from Argentina. You know, Maradona, Messi, yeah. football, Mexico, according to Trump. I have a background in psychology and I was specialized in statistics. I have lived in four countries, some curiosity. I've been living in Argentina, Ireland, Denmark, and Germany. And my favorite video game is Super Mario Tree for the old school gamers. <laughs> I'm going to introduce you to how it was for us to work with the database. So we started a little bit, of course, which is a relational database. <laughs> the tools that we used were the DB diagram, Kinex, and MySQL. That was one of the first things we had to learn Kinex on the go. We actually managed pretty well. Uh, we have to understand the game and the business logic, which was really important to make decisions when we were doing modifications in our schema. Uh, foreign keys became key, and this was really tricky actually to manage because it was a way, a way to establish relationships between the tables. So we didn't want to have any unused relationships or unwanted relationships in them. And the next thing we worked, it was the seeding. Seeding was a way to implant information in the database. So, of course, we have uh, information that we create, like, for example, questions and answers. And we mock some information that was coming from the users or the creators of the game. Some lessons that uh, I will take with me forever. <laughs> First of all, uh, I don't think they're here, but Marta and Babak were our mentors during this uh, module, and that was really important for me to mention. We learned a lot of teamwork. We've been all talking about that, and we will keep on talking about that. <laughs> and that was one of the main lessons we took from here. 
I learned a lot about information management. Um, we need to think about what information we need when we were working. And then we have to think how we were going to use that information. I think this applies for everything in our life related to information. So that's one of the main things we have to work on it. And this was the reason why we keep on updating our schema. And the naming conventions. Uh, I think when you showed that lovely screen, everything was aligned and properly named. But that wasn't, that wasn't done on the first go, of course. Uh, we have to respect all the naming conventions that we established and, of course, um, the ones that MySQL established. So we have some reserve and keywords that we discovered we need to modify. Like, instead of using code, we have to use game code. Or we want to put name on everything and it has to be quite specific. So role game, username. This is the final version of the DB. I try to highlight some of the difference with the original one. We, the two tables that are highlighted, we had to add it while we were developing the game. Um, all the green uh, tri triangles, yeah. <laughs> all the uh, green triangles, it's showing a field that has been added or renamed. And I put a star on game instance because it was the drama queen of our database. <laughs> Some of the fun parts, this is a little bit of internal joke. Yeah. Um, the drama queen requires a lot of uh, Daniel's patience to explain what we were doing with it and how. <laughs> then one day, it was, I think, a Friday, 1 a.m., and suddenly I discover I had a manual manual update in the Kinex files, and I was missing three migrations. And then this came into my mind. One does not simply update a database like this. And for some fun facts, we did six revisions to the database schema and this update. We added nine seats uh, on a total of 486 lines of code, 23 migrations, 338 lines of code. I didn't count it. I used an extension for yeah. it, of course. <laughs> 28 PRs and 84 liters of math for the ones that know me. <laughs> and the database was not an issue anymore. So first of all, I would like to thank to all of you, all the community, our friends, family, everyone that is here with us today. Thank you so much for that. And I would like to uh, thank my husband. Thank you for all the support and the food you cook for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like to say goodbye to all of you with an important message. Code the change you want to see in the world. Thank you so much. Well, hi all. Uh, my name is Kruti. Uh, I'm from India. I'm living here since three years. I have done my master's in chemistry, and uh, I work as a full stack developer intern at Odino. I'm an artist. I see creativity in almost all of the things. I saw some creativity in coding as well, and that's how I started my career in coding. So today I'm going to talk about collaboration. I believe uh, one of the key for a successful collaboration is to have shared vision. We need to have common understanding of the objective in order to collaborate. Some of the tools which helped in collaboration, of course, uh, GitHub and Slack were the important platforms. And then we had this prettier install, uh, which helped us in having consistency in our code formatting. And then we had this ESLint, which helped us in uh, identifying if we had any uh, errors in our JavaScript code or, yeah. And then we also had the, I think uh, we have made a best use of technology in this COVID times. We use this uh, VS Code live share. It was really helpful. And some of the other things like study groups, we had uh, Elastic and Zendesk, which where we could take some help and then we reviewed each other's PRs. We uh, uh, we tried 
tried to get i mean we tried to get some uh, good uh, solutions for that particular code and we tried to understand other code as well and uh, description of the task was important we would get a clear overview of how the particular task has to be and i think almost we have done more than hundreds of uh, audio and video calls you uh, know during this project and then yeah every sundays we used to have this uh, demonstrations and discussions with our mentors it was uh, really helpful and then finally not to forget about the alumni they were the ones uh, who experienced this i mean who had experience working this with this pro I mean such type of projects and we could benefit from that some things uh, which i learned first is like um, fixing the errors so before uh, this project i was really like scared of errors and i didn't know how to fix it and every time i used to get take some help from the mentors but now since working this project i have come across lot of uh, errors and now i understand to map and then find the root cause of the error and then fix it then um, yeah uh, working with team it was like it was challenging but it was really a good experience we had like different skill sets of people in our team and then git pull a day keeps the conflicts away yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because before the project uh, we were working individually and git was really easy for me if i want to say but once we started this project it was really uh, like i don't know how to tell but it was really bad for me because i used to get so many errors so many conflicts i didn't know what to do but now i know okay git pull a day keep this <laughs> conflicts away and then also i learned some uh, some of the new tools like storybook kenex and uh, swagger the fun part it's like okay we all code and we do git add and then we do git comment and we do git push but then always i have some extra step after git commit i just pray i don't get any errors and then i do git push but then the errors like maybe easily error with your error and so many stuff comes one after the other but now i know how to fix those things yeah so finally i want to thank uh, the entire hack your future community uh, for supporting us so far and then i want to thank all the mentors for guiding us throughout our journey and then also our class 12 students for their uh, unlimited efforts i can say during this entire journey yeah so thank you once again Hi. As the first, I want to thank everyone from to, uh, today in the evening. Uh, my name is Muhammad. I'm from Syria. Uh, I'm here in Denmark. It's about uh, six years ago. Uh, my background is uh, HVAC uh, engineering, uh, heating system, air and conditioning system. And also, I get uh, education from Denmark it's as uh, automation and uh, robot technology. Uh, I love work with the computer and uh, technical things. Uh, um, I'm also happy uh, to be here with the part of the Hacker Future. Uh, we want to talk. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. My, my, I am <laughs> <Nathan. laughs> I'm sorry. I forgot. Uh, my name. <laughs> my name is John. I came from Syria. Syria also. I have a psychology background and a master in education. Uh, I have been working in Dubai for. Uh, Online survey company. Uh, in that time, I uh, I start uh, interested in, uh, in IT and develop 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 mm -hmm. uh, websites or yeah. Uh, I was working here also for four years uh, with student uh, in uh, school, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm happy to start my new uh, career idea, new one. Yeah. Today we are going to talk about deployment. Uh, uh, we will uh, uh, start with uh, what is the problem um, and explain what the uh, Heroku is, that the application will do, uh, what the benefit of Heroku and uh, the advantage of deployment that it's a part of uh, uh, Heroku. So, Mohammed will, uh, will start with, uh, uh, with the no. first uh, point. Normally, normally when we create application, so uh, we test the application with the local host. 
So all the developers, they have, uh, they know about that. So uh, this, um, we can see uh, this, it's a kind of a problem. So uh, if we want to test the problem with the, we want to, sh if I want to share the application with the other developer, or I want to, to send it to the, uh, the client, for example. So how can we test it? How can he test it? So uh, because that Heroku, it's coming. Heroku, it's coming. Uh, it will take, uh, Heroku, it will take uh, the code application and uh, make it uh, accessible on the internet Internet and just in a few comments. So this, what is Heroku? Heroku is a platform, uh, platform, uh, the platform surface uh, for for a, for a developer. It's used for a developer and uh, to upload the code and make it uh, online and the live uh, uh, the, the application as a live, and for everyone he can use it. Uh, how we did? How we how we implement uh, the application? The, the Heroku, it's uh, sub, uh, give you an uh, easy way to uh, deploy uh, the application. Just uh, push and uh, push and enter. So that, I'm sorry, can I... uh, here, this is the cycle with the application uh, and uh, how it's working. Uh, you you just uh, develop uh, the application the, in local, in, in locally, and after that, uh, deploying the code the Heroku, and you get, back, you get uh, feedback from Heroku if it's uh, work correctly or not. And this is the cycle, it's go automatically. This is the easy way to, to use it uh, with the Heroku. Uh, Heroku support us with the uh, work with the command line, with the CLI command line, just as uh, it's like what we uh, when we use with the GitHub. So here with the terminal, you can see uh, if uh, uh, the application, it's work uh, okay uh, or not. It's uh, the building is of, of application, it's successfully or not. And also, here you can test uh, the application and the database. Um, also here, the Heroku. Heroku uh, uh, also uh, um, uh, it's a provide uh, uh, a lot of kind of uh, database. You can MySQL, uh, uh, Postgres also it's uh, provided that, and also MongoDB. And this in this slide, I'm sorry. In this slide, you can paste the uh, database uh, uh, locally uh, from uh, uh, Workbench, uh, Table Plus, uh, uh, all, the, all the database application. And here you can see uh, the, the logs of uh, if it's okay or not with, uh, with you. And also, if there are something, if, if there are a problem uh, with the application, it will send you uh, email or uh, give you, um, uh, send you, uh, give you, uh, give you uh, application errors. That, so that's what. So, yeah, uh, as Mohammed mentioned, uh, actually it's in the last stage or uh, when we growing up with the uh, application, we need uh, some tools to uh, uh, to sh to see the, uh, the the components or the all the work what we have done. So we we used uh, Heroku. Why we use Heroku? Heroku, it's easy to use. It's very easy to just uh, create an account and uh, uh, make it uh, make it live. Uh, it's just a few steps that we can just go through that uh, uh, application and we can uh, have the application uh, live. Uh, it's free and it's very important thing in, in, in Heroku. There is a lot actually of tools that we used Heroku. Uh, the most important thing that it's uh, uh, updated automatically. So when we ever have uh, any changes on the components or on the project uh, it will be automatically updated on the on the url so it's very easy to use and very fast to check it it's just only when it click we don't need to go through the local host uh, and uh, open the uh, all folders and uh, see it there so it's only when it clicks it's a bit updated with the every changes and uh, this is the also advantage of automated uh, deployment uh, because it's uh, automatically updated as, as what I mentioned and, and Mohammed mentioned also uh, can, we can test it uh, very fast and we can uh, we can done it and we can see everything uh, very fast uh, but what we have learned from the project actually uh, to work uh, as a team remotely, especially with the corona crisis, so we need yeah. to work uh, with, uh, with, with other as a team in, uh, in at home. So 
uh, we learned that uh, we learned uh, some uh, also uh, tools, swigas, story book, uh, and many things. Uh, we read a lot. We understand. We uh, try to solve the problem, and we try many things. Uh, and we shared experience. Uh, I don't know. Would you like to talk about something about? Uh, I think that that. The that from uh, a project here, um, uh, as what, when I when we work it as a team uh, remotely, uh, because this is to give you us uh, as uh, IT uh, developers. So I think this is the most important thing. You 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 should learn how to work remotely. So this is the the the, uh, the best thing I get at uh, this project. And also uh, the uh, some tools. It's like Swagger. Swagger. It's uh, uh, a very good uh, tester to 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 test uh, uh, application your application uh, and the uh, storybook also i get it yes yeah uh, next was the most important uh, one but it's for me actually to see the application uh, growing and uh, see a lot of things uh, it's like uh, children growing up and uh, see what <laughs> that we are working on uh, we would like uh, to thank all the members uh, stuff uh, uh, in for future uh, classmates and uh, all people who's behind uh, this uh, very useful uh, project yeah. uh, thank you for everyone thank you for happy with future uh, to give uh, us this opportunity to to go through it field uh, because it's a new field to us so thank you Hello everyone, I am Priyanka. I come from India, the land of Namaste. <laughs> yeah. So I have a web development and designer um, background. I have done master's and bachelor's in com computer applications. I love gardening, movies, traveling and coffee. Who don't love coffee these days? And I'm very passionate about my work. I call myself a happy person. So uh, in this journey, we have all learned these uh, tools and programs. So I will not bore you all, just to mention here that I was also one of them who learned all this. <laughs> so yeah, we learned React, JavaScript, Swagger, Node, and Git. Yeah, it was very hard in um, starting, uh, but it get easier over the time. Yes, and we did coding like that wow. these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we are professionals. <laughs> so this is called the House of Lin. It has a roof and a foundation and pillars. So you can see that uh, roof represents the uh, softwares or tools which we use for front end. So we use React, Storybooks, and Figma for designing and prototyping Storybook for our components and React, of course. And uh, for foundation uh, that represents back end, so we have Node, Next, and Git. And uh, obviously, we have these four pillars. Um, we did teamwork, uh, we did a lot of hard work, uh, yeah, and coordination and uh, our lovely mentors' guidance. We couldn't do that without our lovely mentors here. And this is our beautiful, <laughs> beautiful project. Our product, uh, our heart. We did our, uh, we put our heart and soul in this project. Uh, this is our treasure hunt. And uh, these gifts, they um, explain my happiness. <laughs> you can see our happiness. Our, our happiness, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and the fun part. <laughs> so you can see the fun part here is. Every morning when I see somebody had merged their PR and I will look at my code and wondering why it is not working now. It was working last night. And Mohammed, you cannot hide your face. You was the, who is one of them? <laughs> he was the only one who write on class 12 group. Who did that? Tell me who did that. <laughs> and I call Mohammed. Okay, Mohammed, same thing happened with me. Let's talk and you know, let's sort it together. 
so that was a everyday story for us <laughs> so the issues you know they can they don't go away uh, without talking so here communication is a key i would suggest uh, my uh, com uh, coming batch in uh, hack your future that if you don't communicate you cannot sort your errors by your own you need to communicate you have to and uh, <laughs> thank you <laughs> So uh, <laughs> this game uh, is up, uh, this game is built for uh, small kids, but uh, we have created a very cool feature in this game. So parents would be interested to know about that because <laughs> because um, you can you can control uh, the time uh, which your uh, kids devoting to this game. Because uh, what if uh, you only want your uh, kids to play a game for thirty minutes or forty minutes or only one hour? so you cannot go and you know <laughs> take back that phone otherwise they will be crying and um, throwing tantrums so you can uh, set the timer here and uh, if you want your kids to come back after one hour uh, there is a way and if you don't want your kids nearby you so don't set the timer <laughs> they will be away for like whole day yes yeah, so, i would like to say one thing it is that they give for some wise <laughs> I play a lot of games. He's my husband. <laughs> so yeah. So uh, I will now uh, walk uh, walk you through uh, this uh, journey here uh, with starting a game. So uh, you can see it is uh, just a registration part. We can go check and select whatever I uh, whatever. Uh, avatar we know uh, avatar we like and then we can create a game and here i am in the game and we can choose uh, one of these games so i am going to choose this one first so this is the feature i was talking about you can go with and without timer here and we can set timer here and uh, here we go so this game is about treasure we need to find the treasures so what we are going to do is we are going to see if there is some uh, treasure nearby me my um current location here so i'm going to go look around and here i find the treasure here for me so i'm going to click here and here i i can see there is a question but you know i'm not from here i don't know in which direction little mermaid is so i'm going to need a help so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click here and see if i can have this hint here so uh, by looking at this but not south so i can now select not south um, so it is not is here so now i confirm and here i got a one answer right so it congratulates me so uh, like this only if you correct 80% or 85% of the answer right you can have the treasure for you i win the game <laughs> <laughs> so i have i you can see that i have answered like uh, one question here but uh, uh, it is it's just so i i have this uh, treasure here i am now bored from this game i am not going to go and play a new game here so this game is ended i i uh, in any time or point of time i can go back and choose some another game so it is just a uh, normal game if we just uh, end it here but the um, cool thing here is we can play it with our friends all um, again oh, sorry yeah uh, with our friends as well so um, one day i'm going to show off that uh, this game uh, we created and if uh, friends of mine uh, are interested in playing this game so they can come and join me by this join game so what i can do is i'm uh, i will share my qr code or my game code with them and they can join me my team and we can play together so this is the whole game and um, same thing we me and my friends are going to go and answer the questions and this is the all game um this is our project uh, product here treasure hunt and this is all for today <laughs> thank you thank you so much um i yeah i would like to thank uh, all of our mentors especially orhan and martha as well yeah Martha uh, did a very good job 
with us. She was very patient, very wonderful mentor. I we we all love Martha. I think at some point of time, yeah. And um, our hacker future community and our husbands. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you everybody. Thank you a lot. And uh, I'm gonna miss that uh, this uh, gathering and this community because uh, after I think today we all will have some uh, job and. Yeah, because I know we all are wonderful. You will get some. <laughs> yes, thank you, Priyanka. So yeah, Daniel and I will um, have the honor here of ending this great line of presentations um, by yeah going back to where we started, the sixth of October, two thousand nineteen, when you had your first Sunday class with HTML and CSS. And uh, a lot has happened, like you already mentioned. Um, not only all your web developer toolbox that has developed, like you've already talked about, uh, much more than what you've maybe said today, actually, uh, but also friendships, like you can see. Uh, your class have had a lot of fun together, and that's yeah. been amazing. Uh, and communication skills, but you've already said it, so I guess <laughs> you don't have to, uh, uh, I don't have to mention it. Um, we want to take you through some fun moments with some pictures um, through the, the past uh, nine months. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, both the fun parts and the very concentrated, focused uh, class pictures. Um, so yeah, let's jump into that. Really. Yeah. Another kind of thing. So, so this is the uh, first picture I could find. It's from our Christmas dinner. Uh, and like, yeah, you were really, you kind of just started or you've been there for a few months. and. Uh, you were very active and had a lot of fun and a lot of laughs. Um, and you were also very lucky to start with while Charlotte was our uh, in our team. Um, and she was really a star in motivating you. And, uh, making the most yeah, happy and motivating uh, small Slack messages when you were behind on homework or needed a little extra push. So thanks for that, uh, Charlotte, and she's yeah, here to also be with you in the final part of this journey. So that's really nice. Um, yeah, and exactly all the events, the tech events. There has been, like you mentioned, some of them remote because now it's been Corona. So we had, for example, the UX workshop at the Disma, and then uh, the Hacky Future uh, Hackathon, uh, where you also came up with really good app uh, solutions uh, for how to solve some of the problems that people were facing in this time. And the Sendesk study groups, yeah, of course, a big applause to Sendesk and to Elastic that came in on doing even more study groups uh, during, uh, yeah, during Corona. So we have been running like remote study groups. So that's been really great. Here is uh, some pictures from uh, automation workshop with uh, our mentor, Maki and his colleagues at NASC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, more social events. We also had some breakfast, Sunday breakfast. I couldn't find the picture from that. <laughs> and then, yeah, all the many Sunday classes. And uh, your class is pretty lucky because I think we, at one point we had a, a professional photographer visiting. So that means we have a lot of really great uh, uh, pictures from your classes. So uh, now it's going to be almost like a little montage time. We should have like a nice melody running. Very focused here. Very focused. Uh, <laughs> we have Mohammed's kid. Son is also yeah. part of the been part of the class. <laughs> have to say hi to him. We're focused again. With and Alicia in the back. Yeah. John, what were you doing? <laughs> <laughs> is that a hard class? <laughs> That's you database with Babak there. Committing to give, yeah. Yeah, Martha and uh, Babak there. Yeah. And then the great soccer team. Uh, <laughs> right. so we, we had this uh, photo in the beginning, and if you thought it looked a little bit odd or like they didn't really like each other, it uh, was the first class after we had the lockdown. Yeah. So we were allowed to be one class here with social distancing, and of course, we, we can have a Cool photo with the social distancing. I mean, you, you showed that uh, at least. Um, yeah, so, so that was the, <laughs> the good photo. Yes, and now we're here 
you started uh, 16 students and now you are 11 graduating. Um, Afru Santiago from your class is just behind you. They will graduate with the next class, class 13. Um, we have Magda who chose to go a slightly different direction with her new coding skills. And she's also here today, that's nice to see. And then Tisha Weenie that you saw in the picture before, she had a, had a baby and had to take care of that for a while. Um, and then in the very beginning, we had Ahmed who uh, had found another education opportunity that was better for him. So yeah, it's it's been a, been a great journey. So where do we go from here? Some of you mentioned a little bit of like a, a good, goodbye, um, and, and I don't see it as a, a goodbye. It's just like a huge milestone you've reached now in the Hacky Future community. Of course, we want to celebrate the tremendous work you've put into all this. Uh, and Luckily, I don't have to say this. Yes, you are web developers now. I can feel that the confidence is like up here, so that that's cool. Um, and yeah, you also we also see that you become like ambassadors of Hack Your Future now, and uh, both for like the outside, but also for internally. So like you have been going through some steps now that other students will follow, uh, and be, you'll be like an inspiration inspiration from them as well. Um, and yeah, you can kind of. Uh, we hope that you can support them in the way that other students have supported you too. Yeah. So this one you saw in the very beginning, you're part of the community and you make our community. And, um, and this this uh, still lasts also after today. Um, yeah, like I said, what you have achieved is, is a big inspiration from others. Um, and we hope that we'll keep seeing you back, whatever, if it's a social thing, as maybe as mentors or, helping out with homework and for sure I, I see you on Slack probably. Um, yeah, and of course also if you start missing in a week or two Daniel's many messages pushing you, pushing you, <laughs> don't worry, he'll be back. There is a CDs to check and there is a job ads to uh, to communicate about, so, so don't worry. So you can start missing, but he'll be back. Last, it's just to mention some of the companies that uh, have hired our students beforehand. And then we would like to mention yeah, the, the foundation that is supporting Hacky Future to be able to run uh, for free and uh, some of the IT companies that support our work as well. And I think that is all from my talk. Um, now we would like to go to the very important part of the certificates and the, the flowers and um, I hate to be the corona police, but I brought this up here. <laughs> <laughs> so if you still want to give hands to your mentors or something like that, can I, oh, you can maybe hug <laughs> if you'd like all the way down. Um, then you can always sanitize before and after, depending on what you like. So uh, should we end the session online? Yep. Or yeah. That's up to you, how. Uh, yeah, I, th I think we should. We should do that. We it's should end good. the session online. Um, yeah, and thank you for. For following us uh, online, we'll uh, go with a little bit of a uh, a dance with the flowers and diplomas here. That uh, it, it's hard for you to follow um, being home, uh, so we'll just uh, stop the, the call and the recording. But um, thank you and to the people connected to the community. Uh, I guess I'll see you soon. Yeah. All right.